Well, again, good morning, folks, and it's great to be back in the Lord's house on the Sabbath day, isn't it? Amen. You know, the, yesterday, the country, the nation of New Zealand celebrated Waitangi Day, and uh, it is, a, it is a, a, a great thing in our history, you know, to, to come together as one people. And today, when I just look around, we too can say that every Sabbath, we celebrate our own Waitangi Day, don't we? Because we've got so many people from all over the world here. We've got Tammy from America. We've got brothers and sisters from the Philippines. We've even got some from South Africa. Too. Yeah. And um, we've got a brother from Tonga this morning. And we've got a family from Tonga, I should say. And we've got our Korean brothers and sisters down the front here. And uh, who have I missed? Oh, we've even got some Swiss people here too with us too. But um, isn't it great to know that the Lord's Church encompasses the whole world and the gospel is going to the whole world. Amen? All right. Well, my opening Bible text this morning comes from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Just give you time to, to get there. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And it says here, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, or if we, um, what was the other word, or if we do not lose heart, is the translation in the New King James Version. Let us just bow as we ask the Lord to be with us this morning again. Father, we'd like to say thank you that we can come as a family before you this morning. We've sung praises to your name, Lord, and you deserve each and every one of our praise, Lord, and we just want to glorify you this morning by looking at your word, and we praise you and thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. Last year, we asked the church to complete a survey that was re recommended to us by Amazing Facts team member, Pastor John Ross, to adapt the empowering church program, which we did. And I'd like just to, to go uh, through what that means, the empowering church program, and it states simply that the Empowering Church program is a dynamic church growing plan built on solid biblical principles, the spirit of prophecy, and the distinctive mission and message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This well-laid-out program gives you proven methods that will give your church step-by-step step in, in building an effective evangelism cycle where true evangelism is seen as an ongoing process and not just a one-time outreach event. And as the board has spent some time in reviewing this program, we then took on the recommendation and adopted to present the Empowering Church program in the Wangarei Church. The first step, of course, being the survey. And uh, we thank you all who participated as uh, that has given the board clear guidelines in which direction you have requested us to operate. The Empowering Church program is actually divided into six main modules, and to work through these modules does not happen overnight, as the main emphasis is on foundation, consolidation, and to move out, and to move on the text module, the next module, as the church feels confident. At all points, the Empowering Church program is assessing and identifying the church's evangelism readiness, visitor receptiveness, and ministry effectiveness. And that was your job in completing the survey. The next step that the board was encouraged to implement was an outreach leadership team, and they are solely responsible to the board. During the holidays, they have not been sleeping, uh, or holidaying completely, the outreach leadership team, which at present is four members, has met on two occasions, and as stated by you, have decided to work in these four sections, divided, dividing them into two phases. Phase one consists of to raise awareness in the Wangarei community. So that's one of the main... Um, areas that we will be working in and part of the second part of phase one is to prepare members to give bible studies remembering this is everything that you've told us you want to do okay 
Now, phase one will be looked after by a certain team. And then when we go down to phase two, you'll see um, there's another one here which simply means to provide opportunities to build positive relationship with non-members and to meet the needs of visitors to the church. You might say, well, they're pretty, pretty basic uh, steps that we want to look at, but they're necessary because you've marked them, you've ticked them, right? And, um, and th these are the areas that we want to, want to work in. The team, the outreach um, team has also approached other members to assist them in these areas where we feel that the persons are competent and have already shown uh, their readiness in these areas. Now, would, you would have noticed that in your bulletin uh, also that the church has planned or called for a picnic lunch in the park, in Mere Power Park, on Sabbath, the 21st of March. Not only is this designated for fellowship and refreshment, but it is also on that same afternoon, we will literally be kicking off phase one of this program. Now, we do not know who filled out those survey papers. We don't know who ticked each box. But however, we do know uh, how many of you requested that we work in these areas. And um, we're expecting at least 36 of you at that afternoon meeting on, uh, on Sabbath, right? So that's, uh, that'll be happening on uh, Sabbath the 21st of March. Now, outside the building stands this impressive sign. Everyone's seen that sign, haven't they? Oh, yeah, some people have seen it. Oh, that's good. Um, and it is an, an impressive sign, and um, it's been standing outside. How long, Bill? Two years now, is it? Yeah, and I think Bill, too, because he was the, the uh, man who helped organise this. And it is a neat sign, isn't it? Amen? Okay, but what's it telling people? You know, someone walks along the road there, and they, they stop at our sign, and I've seen them do it as I've been, you know, working around the church here. And, uh, and they look at it and they think, well, um, yeah, here we have the Wangarei Seventh-day Adventist Church. So this is where this group of people meet, right? They meet here. And, uh, oh, yeah, they've got a logo up there with a cross and, a, and a, I think that's a Bible and a, and a flame. Yeah, that must be the Holy Spirit and they must, I think they believe on the Bible. Yeah, that's great. Um, what else is on? Oh, yeah, look, they even invite you to worship with them. So that's, that's, that's pretty neat, isn't it? They invite you to worship with them. Uh, but hang on, <laughs> they think oh, on Saturday, I think they got that wrong, didn't they? They want you to come on Saturday to church because they have a Bible study and they have a worship service. It's either they got the day wrong or someone couldn't spell Sunday. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a pretty nice sign, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, there's something else here. Oh, I could get to know them if I go and visit their website. That's a good idea, eh? I've got a, a computer at home, I could go and check them, check them out. Um, yeah, what is it again? Some, I've got something here. Wangare Adventist. Oh, hang on, there's a dot there. Yeah, right. Oh, there's a phone number too. Phone number. I hope, it, I hope it's the right number. I think I'll, I'll give them a ring. But that's, a, that's the sign, isn't it? And that tells us what we're all about, right? Does it really tell people what we're all about? I don't know. I've banged my head on that sign a couple of times. It's pretty hard. I don't know if the people inside are pretty hard. But no, it does tell people a little bit about who we are, don't we? Especially if they go to our website. It's all listed there, right? But still, there's something missing. You know, and somebody says, Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Yeah, well, I've got rugby, soccer, basketball. Yeah, maybe horse racing. Yeah, I don't know. I've got to check them out. But uh, the sign does not tell them what type of relationship they can have with Jesus Christ. Amen? They don't, doesn't, doesn't tell them either what type of a relationship that we have with one another and with our God. And that's why now it is really time to put a face to our sign, okay? It's time to let people know who we are. We are normal people. And that's who we are, right? I know there's a lot more of us, but those are the only photos I could find. Okay, and that doesn't mean that's the uniform we wear all the time either. And uh, we're not trying to introduce a new uh, fashion by wearing yellow scarves. But it's time for us to show our face. It's time for us to put a face behind the sign. 
In other words, it is simply time for us to go out into the community. It is time for us to raise awareness of the church in the Wangarei community. It's time for us to roll up our sleeves. It is time for us to rub shoulders with others. And it is the time to get our hands dirty for Jesus. To raise awareness of the Wangarei church, uh, uh, sorry, to raise awareness of the church in the Wangarei community, how are we going to do this? You may have ideas that you want to share, and that's why we're coming together on Sabbath the 21st of March. Community, outreach, reach out with the hand of Jesus, the hand of love, the hand of compassion, the hand of healing, the hand of hope, the hand of grace, the hand of salvation. It is with our hands that we work, but it is Jesus' hands that we are clothed with. His strength becomes ours as we call on him through the power of the Holy Spirit to equip us for the work ahead. You filled out the survey, but we're not going to send you out one by one. We're going to do it together, not alone. Because as I looked and prepared this, uh, this slide, I chose this one with the flowers because when we go out as a community, we're going to be working among people. Some are delicate like these flowers. Others are a bit hardened. They more be, might be more like weeds out there. But the, every person out there is a child of God. And that's why we want to go out into the community to show them our faces, that we love them and that we care. In the word community, we have a foundational word tied up with it, and it's called unity. United in purpose and united in goal. Without this unity, it is to no avail to work together uh, for Jesus. We have to pull together and unite in prayer and in giving a hand. We can still work individually, but we are all still united in prayer and through the Holy Spirit. This is to be a team effort, and the team is the body, the church of God. It is our name that is outside on that sign. Not Gary's, not Lynn's, not Grant's, not Jim's. It is our name, your name and my name as Seventh-day Adventist believing Christians. And we are not only a name, are we? We are a remnant movement that has the everlasting gospel to share with our community here in Wangarei, no matter what or what they don't profess. And when I use the word empowering, when we're going to empower you to help take the gospel into the community of Wangarei. A story came a couple of weeks ago in the record, and I don't know whether you all read it, but it was talking about a prayer garden. Did anyone read about that prayer garden in Tauranga? They, it was opened a couple of weeks ago, and on their opening day, they had a, an absolute phenomenal amount of people went through it. And really positive um, comments came back um, from people who walked through this garden. And many people spent hours in this garden meditating, praying, and just feeling at peace in this prayer garden. But the question that came up the most obvious was, who are these Seventh-day Adventist people? Who are these Seventh-day Adventist people? And that's why it's important for us to put a face on our sign and go out into the community so that people know who the Seventh-day Adventist church is and what a message we have. Also, towards the end of this uh, word uh, community, we have a, a ground root word, which is called communication. And... Uh, because actions sometimes speak louder than words, we don't normally have to have a verbal communication within the community. So while we are there alongside to whom Jesus asks us to help, aid or assist, there is always an opportunity for you to speak a word of the reason for the wonderful hope that we have. And what a responsibility we have. You see, there are so many people out there that have no idea who we are and with what we are entrusted. In a conversation with my plant suppliers, I was again amazed at the comments that arose from our conversation. 
one of them looked at me in astonishment and said, what? You go to church on Saturday? Why? I said, because Jesus did. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter what day you go on, does it? Yes, it does. Then another states that she believes in the secret rapture, and this is why, and so on. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ for the gospel of salvation and his church. There are so many people out there that do not know the true gospel message. And that is why it is important to know what's here in God's word. It is overdue, really overdue, for us to communicate the clear, understandable gospel message. It is necessary. It is really necessary. It is necessary for them to know that it is Jesus. Yes, that he, Jesus, is our high priest and him only. There is a, a misconception also amongst the Irish Catholics and thousands of others that if you go to confession every Sunday, then it's okay to sin every day of the week because you're forgiven on Sunday. Sorry, folks, we've got good news for them and they mightn't like it because uh, it's not scriptural, is it? There is only one name unto heaven whereby we are forgiven, the name of Jesus. It is necessary that they know that we are not secretly raptured and have a second chance at being saved. Would that be fair on us? No, it wouldn't. During a seven-year period, they think, okay, we've got another second chance. That is also is not scriptural. The prophecy is clear that the scripture that they use is about Jesus and him being cut off at a certain time, not that there's another seven years of probation. Today is the day of your salvation. Tomorrow is too late, and there is no second chance. That is scriptural. It is necessary that they know what happens when someone dies. For we are to pray for the living and not for the dead. The occult has captured the attention of our youth today, but on, brought on mainly too by their parents that heard or saw their parents engaging in fortune-telling or reading their star signs, trying to talk to loved ones that had passed on. Isaiah 8, verse 19 and when they say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God among the living to the dead? Our God is alive. The dead know nothing. It is necessary that they know that Jesus will raise those whom accepted him when he comes again, and that we too who are alive will be caught up to meet him in the air. If everyone went to heaven when they died, then why is Jesus coming back again? The scripture says he is the resurrection and the life. It is necessary for them to know the Ten Commandments and that the Ten Commandments are not nailed to a tree, that they are valid or needed even more so today for our guidance and protection. Protection, yes, for our protection. God is deserving our honour and worship. We are to glorify him and him only, not misuse his name. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Oh, it's okay. I didn't get married. I'm not committing adultery. Sorry, you are. Love your mother and your father. Where has the respect gone that we grew up with? Love your father and your mother. This is the protection that people need. People are throwing children in washing machines. Where is the love of the family gone? It is necessary that they know that the seventh day Sabbath is the Lord's holy day. It is a sign, an open sign of our allegiance to whom we serve. Plus it is also a memorial to creation. Yes, we didn't evolve and praise the Lord, we didn't. And we are created from the hand of God, a God that upholds everything with order. The most frequently asked question that we hear today is that if God is a God of love, then why all this suffering and pain? And for many of us, it is a, it's a pretty hard question to answer. However, there are two pieces of scripture that we can use, and I'd just like to say, show you how we can do that. So let's turn in our Bibles to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13 will give us a bit of an explanation into that on how to give people an answer. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke 
Luke chapter 13, and we'll start at verse 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 13, and it says, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and was bowed together, and they could in no wise lift, she could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, her, he called to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the rulers of the synagogues answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in there, therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? A simple answer tucked away there in verse 16. Why was this woman 18 years in, affirm in, in, in an affirmative state, or suffering from infirmity, I mean? It was because Satan had bound her. That's why we have... Um, the problems that we do in the world today. Let's just also go to Matthew uh, chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Uh, easy ones to remember because they both start with the same uh, numbers for the chapter. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 29. And this is another parable put forth by Jesus. And he said to them, The king of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tears? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? And he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you root also up the, the wheat with them. We know that from this parable that the seed, the good seed, is the word of God. And there's another seed that has been planted out there by who? We read it in verse 27. Um, sorry, in verse 25. But while men sleep, his enemy came and sowed among the wheat and went his way. The enemy, Satan. Satan is another, is another word for enemy. He's the one that has caused the problem in this world. It is necessary that people understand the true work of the Holy Spirit and that he is indeed part of the Godhead. It is necessary for them to know that it's not uh, a spirit that leads us into spiritualism. It's not a spirit that leads us into false um, gibberish um, praise. It is necessary that the people in the community know that Babylon has fallen and that judgment has come upon the world. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth. Our God wants our worship. He is coming. Go and tell your community. When we think on the community work that we want to undertake, we just have to look how Jesus did it, his uh, community work. Every day he walked and worked among them. He had compassion on all those whom bore the curse of sin. You may then say, well, hey, we can't go out and feed four to five thousand people like Jesus did. No? Physically, maybe not, but spiritually we can, as we have the bread of life. We have the bread of life that was up offered up for all of us. Jesus, the bread of life, has more spiritual nourishment than any supermarket bread can offer. Amen? His words heals, and his word we have. His word heals both physically and mentally. His word sets us free, and that offers us healing to the depressed and downtrodden. He heals the blind. He gives us power 
to heal the spiritually blind. We can heal their sight when they can truly see the true understanding of the gospel message. In uh, the book, uh, John chapter 10, we have another instruction here. John chapter 10, verses um, 2 to 3. Oh, sorry, I've got that one wrong. I've noted it down in the wrong column, but uh, that's okay. That's okay, because it says, and I'll just refer to it, uh, refer to the other text. Some of you might know where it is. Um, it says, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So it is time for us to go and become laborers in our community. Do we, have many of you seen this little tree growing out the back of the church here? We planted that in commemoration of our 50th anniversary here for the standing of, the, of this building. And this little kauri tree has grown quite extensively in the last two years. You can actually see the growth in the, um, I've got a laser pointer here, in this part here in two years. So that's pretty fantastic. And I think if we use that as a, as a symbol for our growth, that our growth is sturdy and strong. Um, and that by becoming sturdy and strong, we can always remember that it's kia kaha. Kia kaha simply means to be strong. And that's what we want to be. Be strong in the Lord. Don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Remain strong in and for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord... Had a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. And uh, since you've been all so, so good and sat quietly here and listened, you can come and have lunch with us.